All right, we have parts. We are going to start installing them and seeing where we get. There's a lot of things I need to take care of in the process of getting everything in there, but we'll just start whittling them away and get right to it. All right, so first stop will be how short are these stock cables? We are real close, but so like we can't pivot them inside. So we are gonna need Maybe three inch longer ones over here. Well, that means I'm definitely gonna need a custom set. So we may as well just send those back and get like a full blown universal set. But it does look like this straight will work. I'm kind of feeling it. All right, now let's move on to other things. All right, so we got our bad boy oil cooler here. It will just pretty much lock and load right in there. Something along those lines. Probably want this thing to come a little bit further over here. So I'm gonna have to remove these bars, like I kinda suspected. But essentially what we're gonna do to make it so we can remove the bars and probably not put them back in, is I made these brackets that will go on the bottom and hold it up to keep it from twisting. And other than that, we'll be pretty much good to go on there. All right, got those temporary support bars out of there. Intercooler still mounted up really, really well in there. So we're good on that front. Now, we can see how this guy fits in here again. Maybe we can put it off over here. Thinking what I can do is I can probably make a couple spikes of some sort. That it can sit on. And then we'd only need to have a little clampy type thing just to hold everything forward. But when it gets us about there, I'd be real curious to see Yeah, it should be able to maneuver that corner. Definitely feeling, feeling that. The reason we're putting it a little bit off to the side is so we got enough room for the hoses to come down and around underneath the headlight. So we should have enough room there. So yeah, guess it's time to work on the mount for this guy. All right, we got one hose done. We're up to the next hose. This is a nylon braid hose that has a little bit of stainless in it for strength, but 
not necessarily as much as it takes to make it extremely heavy like these things are, the uh, solid stainless. So I've already taped where I need it here and I'm just going to cut straight through with the angle grinder. Let's clean out the hole a little bit. All right, well, there's our hoses. Then we can just remove our tape. And reveal our perfect hose. Now, you might be wondering why I chose the angle grinder. And that's because it scorches the uh, ends of the cut, which makes it so it doesn't have this fuzzy stuff. So that was heating up and pretty much cauterizing the fluff, which will make it a lot easier to put the little fittings on. All right, now I've seen a lot of people complain on like Amazon comments on this particular thing even, that getting these fittings on takes two hours or so, they're full of it. Essentially, I think the problem is they don't get that cut quite well, but once you get it essentially lined up in there, you just pretty much push and twist. Like can you see, we're getting that closer to the threads. That thing needs to pretty much bottom out behind the threads. So we just keep working it. There you go. A couple seconds later, we are in it. So, I already got the other one jammed in there. So all that we have left is put the fitting on and tighten it in. So pretty much here's the other fitting. And what I do is just throw on the lube of choice. A little bit on the threads and a little bit on the surface. Kind of smear that around a little bit. I'm just using assembly lube because that's what I have around and it makes it so it doesn't run all over the place. So let's get this other one all lubed up as well. And we should be good. I need to find my paper towels. All right, anyways, that just slides in and starts threading in. Grab these guys and head over to the vise. All right, so essentially out here in the vise, it's kind of dark out here, but you can see we got a rag put in the vise. And we just slide it in, crank her down, and then we need to get our special AN wrench. So essentially to make sure you don't mess up these edges, you need an AN wrench. So we got our special one right here. 
we're all ready to go and we just start cranking her down. And there we go. Now the perfect end. No Mari. So I'm gonna crank down this other end and we'll just throw this thing back up. Oh yeah. All right, so now that we got our line, we just attach them up here. Just a, it's a, such a simple little thing. It already pretty much has a hole in it. All that we're gonna do is finish cutting her open. All right, well I got a pipe tap, which came with the drill bit. So you know that's appropriately sized. Let's crank that down. There we go. Right in. Cue her up. And you really just can't get better than that. All right, so there it be. Essentially, they do sell one of these, but any place I could find it, they wanted like 20 bucks for it. So it was much cheaper to get the drill bit and the tap and take care of it myself. So now we can go throw this back on the car, and then we'll have something to attach the oil feed for. So, onward. All right, now this is what I'm talking about. Let's reline this guy back up. Not getting much for a Kingston line over here. So anyways, I put slotted bracket here so I can put bolt on the piece and it slides right into the slots. And then I made these aluminum clips that clip over the top of the radiator and holds everything in there. So everything still kind of is kind of able to move, but I can re 
move the safety strap off this, and our radiator's not going anywhere. Still gonna have to figure out something, probably run a bar or something across the top that holds on up here. But that's not turning out too bad. Maybe notch this a little better so we can get a better alignment for a radiator cap. All right. This is looking pretty good. Now all they've got to do is wait for a couple finishing touches and we'll be set. All right, so the last finishing touches here are going to be a couple of these little clamps. I'm just going to put a couple of them on in some strategic places here. We've got one here where it rides against the frame piece. Let's put one up here. Good there. Let's fit this last one I'm going to put down by the headlight here, right where the uh, hose kind of touches the body. Hopefully that'll keep it from trying to wear through. Well, maybe you might be able to see it, but this piece of metal here, we got the uh, bracket right here, so that way it rubs against that, so the hose is perfectly protected. Then we got our couple clamps there to keep everything looking nice and sharp. And I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. Of course, like everything I do, we gotta see if the hood shuts. All right, we're good. The uh, shock doesn't doesn't run into anything. So I am happy with that. All right, so we're officially in business with the oil cooler setup. Everything's kind of mounted up and working the way I hoped it would. So. Off camera, I'll probably run the hose from the oil pan and pump up to the sandwich adapter thingamajig. Mainly because there's no real way to get a camera back there to show you anything about it. So, I'll get that rigged up and then next time we can work on making some spark plug wires. Since the stalkers aren't quite going to cut it. We'll send them back. I've already got a different set here that's custom made to fit. So we'll make them fit and we'll move on from there. So thanks again for joining me and maybe we'll see you later.